Thanks all for joining. Um, welcome to our regular town hall today, tonight, whatever time it is for you. Um, so uh, for those of you don't, who don't know me, I'm Simona and I'm Hospitable's community manager. Um, so I'll just uh, give you a brief overview of how we usually do these for those of you who are new. Um, so before we kick things off, just a quick reminder that our town halls are recorded and will be made available for uh, playback on our hospitable YouTube channel and you can also listen to the replays here in the Clubhouse app. Um, so first we'll get started with some company updates and then we'll let you know what's going on with the business, some updates on direct bookings um, and other things you've been asking for. And then finally, we'll open up a Q&A session. So when the time comes, you can raise your hand through the app and we'll invite uh, people on stage to ask their questions. Um, please remember to mute yourself when you're on stage so you're not speaking as a courtesy to other uh, people in the audience. Um, and if you're not comfortable on being on stage or you don't want to be recorded, you can always ask your questions via the chat function and we'll have Jen there help us out and escalate some of the questions to the stage. Um, and without further ado, I give it to Pierre. And Pierre? I was muted. Yes, <laughs> it happens to me still working remotely that I'm still muting myself. Hello, everyone. Thank you for, for joining us again. Um, I'm going to start with some very high level uh, kind of company updates, uh, but basically what I've been spending most of my time on uh, in, uh, in recent two weeks in the last time, which was the first of June. What changed uh, is that we're spending a lot more time on recruitment. Um, it's been something that we had to put on all to put uh, priority on the product and on direct in particular. Uh, now a senior um, talent acquisition person uh, has been onboarded into our team just this Monday. She could not join us uh, just today, um, but we will be lucky to introduce <laughs> you to her on the next occasion. Um, we have a lot of roles uh, to be looking for, and this time, obviously, we are focusing heavily on product and engineering roles. Um, I wanted to basically share the link, and I had a fantastic pro thing before. Okay, so um, we're looking actually for uh, for three roles uh, for product managers. So those are the people that are defining uh, the roadmap and doing a discovery and checking in particular. Uh, what is the highest priority, what is the lowest effort uh, for delivering satisfaction to our customers. Um, we are looking for three roles in product, including a lead product manager. Um, that basically is a person that will have a high level of ownership on the roadmap on direct in particular, which is by far one of the most complicated products we've ever built so far. And just to give you an idea in terms of compensation, how much does it pay to work at Hospitable uh, for this role in particular, which is really a, a leader for a product organization to be built, uh, we're looking for a maximum cash compensation of $255,000 uh, for as cost of Linux City, uh, like San Francisco, New York, or even uh, London, I think we qualify as a city like this. Uh, we're also looking to recruit four engineers um, that are going to be working on different areas of the product. Uh, we basically have different kind of sections uh, that are currently at a, still very much at the level of a prototype within a very tiny engineering team. So we're looking for engineers to uh, join on the core and connectivity side, so really developing new features and new integrations uh, with, um, with OTAs, so with Airbnb, uh, developing new integration with Airbnb, for example. That was, uh, to give an example, last uh, uh, security deposit uh, that we released uh, two weeks ago at the occasion of a town hall to a popular request of, on, the, on the Facebook group. Um, we, have, we will have, obviously, developers joining us as well on direct and also uh, joining Ben in particular on front end and mobile. So we learn a lesson in terms of mobile. There is something that we need to do and basically having a fully functional mobile application. But what we want to do is having it, more, having, uh, giving it a more native uh, look and experience and allow us to build on top of more features around Android and iOS. Uh, we also will be looking for a principal software engineer, uh, giving the max composition is as well. It's exactly almost the same, uh, $254,000 in a high cost of life city, such as San Francisco. Um, those positions, uh, product and engineering, actually we can, we are looking to hire, uh, to serve American and, uh, American and European time zones. That's literally a very significant part of the planet. Um, and we have been going through already hundreds of applicants so far. Um, we have received hundreds of applicants. God, I wish we would be able to go through them. Um, 
the, the Mac compensation, if you're curious, is actually public on each of those jobs. Um, and if you have something that is particularly interesting to you, uh, I've basically pinned there on the top uh, their job application website that we're going to be using. Uh, and you can check it out again on apply.workable.com slash hospitable to see what those job descriptions entail in particular. Um, so we spend still a lot more time on those recruitments. Um, on the investor front, I like to share those updates, but because I know that there are some of you that are in the room. Um, so we met with a few investors uh, last, uh, last Wednesday, and it was really to review our growth uh, for the second half of the year uh, so far. So the update basically is still that we are on target uh, to reach 10,000 customers uh, for this year, doubling our customer base uh, since January. And actually just reviewing it even today, uh, our growth rate are very stable. Um, that may be bad, that may be good. I'm going to be optimistic um, that we have basically reached a foundation, a new foundation for our growth. Um, so 20% of growth per quarter uh, for our customer base and also for our revenue, uh, where we're going to be touching to be $300,000 MR. So that's something that we'll be, we'll be having a little bit of a, a glass of water to it uh, and going back to working on product. Now on product, um, obviously Ben, we'll get back to you on some updates on things that have been shaped, that have been done by your team. Uh, I wanted to share basically that there is still a hot potato that is being discussed and not really so much with the team because the team would be absolutely okay to implement whatever is given, but really uh, working with our partner and lawyers and accountants on basically the subject of taxes. Um, and taxes remain very much a hot potato. Um, so what we wanted to do initially was really going as far as possible in terms of the liabilities um, to allow our property owners and hosts uh, using our direct product to be fully compliant. And that means going as far as from registering properties uh, to all the relevant local jurisdictions in your name. But that was also not collecting and calculating the right taxes. That's actually part of the basics. Um, but also filing and remitting taxes on your behalf. And after spending a quite extensive amount of time on this, uh, this is kind of the limit of the law. <laughs> and it works really well if you are a Verbo, if you're an Airbnb or an Expedia. Uh, but you need to basically demonstrate at least $100,000 worth of bookings in, a, in some states that are basically more proactive in that regard, uh, which are uh, notoriously Florida, Texas, and California. Uh, that are basically having more of those uh, voluntary collection agreements. And we would love to touch on those um, because we strongly believe that taxes are a very important element to ensure that short-term rentals are going to be admitted and accepted and sustainable in many jurisdictions uh, around the United States in particular, but around the world in general. Um, so we are, we are rather unique in the fact that every conversation I need to start, no, no, we want to take that liability, we want to file, we want to, uh, to register those properties in your name because we want to ensure that you are absolutely going to be fully compliant uh, with all the tax people that are involved. Uh, and every time we need to say the conversation starts, okay, so as a marketplace, you don't need to do anything. And that's, that's really not something that I, that I like to hear because it means that there, there is no Airbnb. Those are the same people that are working obviously, uh, with all the other OTAs. And that's basically explained the reason why uh, we're having challenges around compliance in many jurisdictions. Um, so there, there, there is an idea <laughs> that I'm floating out there is what do you think about basically hospitable filing, registering properties for you? So if let's imagine you are a new host and you want to register a property, um, would you ac agree with the idea that it should be a software uh, to do it for you on your behalf to file and remit those taxes for you? That means probably charging your bank account uh, if there is some, some amount that are due. Um, are you okay with probably maybe giving powers of attorney uh, to a to a specific company that will be managed by Hospitable to be able to to file those those, those uh, things for you, and I'm coming from the experience of basically um, the the experience that we're having on hiring employees in the United States that we are doing through a third party. Uh, it's called a PEO, a professional employer organization. And when I need to run payroll, it's basically just a few clicks and validate. I have some input and then basically all the operations financially and accounting wise are completely automated from there. And I realize that that's something I can use as a, as a software company, but our own customers cannot have maybe a product so easy or they need to go to the service of an accountant that just basically does the same things themselves. So I wanted to basically test the waters here a little bit. There's nothing that we will be considering uh, short term 
but I'm kind of floating the idea of a tax and compliance product to, to push the limit a little bit more and make sure that uh, you know, all our customers can run a compliant operation tax-wise. Um, and to finish on my little rant and my little segment, um, I wanted to say that on, there's going to be a bit of a personal note. Uh, it's maybe for me the last time all for a bit. I have a, a very happy event uh, coming soon. We're counting the, the days now. Um, so I'm not sure if I will be there for the end of June uh, or you know early July, um, but I will be listening to me again probably from a maternity ward uh, in the upcoming weeks out for the next town hall. And without any kind of transition, uh, I'm going to give the transition to Matthew. That's a tough Thank little you. little yeah, transition to follow. I didn't make it easy for you. But I, I love I love the little and all that. So we uh, we look forward to you not being here on the next few town halls, with all due respect, of course. Um, so hey, everybody, how are you all doing? Missed you all. Our couple of customer updates for you. So right now, since the last time we met, our NPS sits at a very strong 66. If you recall, the last time we met, we discussed introducing a CSAT score to our team. Um, proud to report that over the past couple of weeks, our CSAT score is an 89% out of 100. We're getting some great feedback from, from you all, our hosts. We wholeheartedly appreciate it. If you do interact with our support team, be on the lookout for that email asking for feedback on your recent support experience. We take those seriously. We're going to review your feedback, not only within with the agent directly, but of course within the team as well, um, to make sure that we're addressing your needs, make sure we hear you and that we're solving your issues to the best of our ability. Um, marketing events coming up. You should have received an invitation in your inbox for our next masterclass with Sarah Karakayan and Annette Grant of Thanks for Visiting. That's going to happen on Thursday, June 23rd, 2 p.m. Eastern. Uh, join us. They're going to help us discuss how to attract more guests by beautifying your listing. You know, we know that the visual element's always been an important aspect of your listing, right? But of especially with the new Airbnb updates, the look of your listing is going to be more important than ever. So they're going to share tips on how to style your listing, how to pick the right interior design elements, and they're going to even let you know how to create the perfect Airbnb listing. So I'm excited to see what they have to share on that front. Uh, but if you miss the invite, you can always just shoot us an email, marketing at hospitable.com. We'll be sure to send it your way. We'll probably be sending out another invite here in the next day or so. On top of that, uh, what are we hearing from our customers? Well, hosts are in search of a remote lock integration. We've heard that from not only the support team, but from the sales team pretty regularly in our meetings over the past couple of weeks. Um, I'm excited to hear what Ben has to say because I took a look at the previews for what's upcoming next, and I'm a bit excited. And then since Pierre mentioned recruitment, I'll also mention recruitment. On our end, we are looking um, to recruit our next head of marketing. That post should be live this week, and we're going to start actively pursuing adding another sales rep to our team as well to help meet some of that demand. And lastly, the support team is also going to be adding two reps to our Asia Pacific team. So all those jobs well, the, a couple of the jobs are already available on the link that Pierre shared earlier. Um, and thank you for sharing the webinar link up at the top. So if you want to register for that uh, event with Sarah and Annette, you can go ahead and click the link at the top, uh, register, and you know we'll, we'll be sure to uh, answer your questions. And I'm sure they're going to have some great content to share with you all. And that's it from me on the sales and marketing end. We'll pass it along to, to Ben. Ben, what's new? I know we got a lot going on there. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Matthew. Uh, it's, it's incredibly hard to follow all of you guys, Pierre, with his incredible news, and Matthew, amazing to have you back. Um, but yeah, I've got some product updates for everybody today. Um, first up, direct bookings. Uh, so you might remember in the last town hall, we were super close, or I said we were super close to launching a private pilot program. Uh, the good news to share with you today, uh, that program is now up and running, um, so we're super excited about that. Um, so the pilot program at this point includes the ability to define and collect taxes uh, for your direct bookings, not the kind of complex stuff that Pierre was talking about earlier for the filing and registering, um, but what you can do in the pilot for now is you can uh, define your taxes, have them charged to the guest as part of the direct booking flow, and they'll be paid out to you uh, to handle as you, as you so wish and as you need to. Um, so that part of taxes has been in the pilot for about a week now, uh, and the feedback so far has been pretty good. 
Uh, the other thing, uh, slightly more exciting than taxes, <laughs> although taxes is great, uh, that we added to the pilot program a couple of days ago now is payment processing for direct bookings. Um, so our pilot customers, uh, there's only a few so far, I'll talk a bit more about that in a while. Um, our pilot customers have had the ability to add Stripe accounts to Hospitable. Um, they can associate those Stripe accounts with their properties, uh, collect money from guests as part of the direct booking flow. Um, so yeah, it's finally there in some form, uh, which is, is awesome news. Um, so uh, yeah, as I, as I mentioned, you can add as many Stripe accounts as you need to. You can have different Stripe accounts for different properties. Um, so we're kind of taking into account all those things if you need to get money paid into different accounts for uh, different hosts, different properties and things like that. Um, we've also introduced the ability in that pilot program to cancel and refund reservations as well. Obviously it's great to take money from guests, but sometimes we need to uh, refund money back and that's obviously an important part of opening up a pilot program is like hey we can take the money but yes we can also give it back uh, and even at this stage in the pilot we're supporting partial refunds as well uh, and multiple refunds so if you refund a guest uh, and decide that you know down the down the road you need to um, issue a, a further refund um, provided it's not more than the original booking total uh, you will be able to do so um, so feedback on that has been pretty limited so far as I mentioned it's only been there for a few days but mostly positive so far um, and we're really looking forward to sharing this with a wider audience uh, in, in the coming weeks. Um, the pilot's still pretty small at the moment, uh, we currently have three people in there um, but you know as we get that feedback um, we're, we're looking to expand that out to others who have registered interest. Um, so yeah keep an eye out for, for that. Uh, we're also adding to the pilot as well, we're not finished. So uh, I mentioned cancellations and refunds um, we're also working on alterations. Alterations isn't part of the pilot yet, um, but it's something the team is working hard on and should be there within a couple of days. Um, so you'll be able to go into your conversation in Hospitable, request an alteration, kind of similar to how you do with Airbnb. Uh, we'll recalculate the dates, the guests, the totals, uh, and we'll also be able to collect or partially refund the difference to the guest based on the alteration. Uh, so that's in the pipe. That'll be coming to the pilot very, very soon. Um, all very good, direct bookings pilot, but for the people that aren't in the pilot at the moment, uh, what have we shipped for direct in the last couple of weeks? Uh, one thing that was requested quite a lot, uh, Christian, thank you so much for working on this. Uh, Christian shipped the, uh, when you receive a new request to book now from your direct booking websites or the widget, uh, we weren't notifying you. So you had to kind of go and hunt around uh, and obviously it's on you as a host to kind of accept or decline that, that direct booking. Um, we're going to notify you now. So you'll see an email hit your inbox when you receive a new request to book. If you have push notifications turned on for the web app or the mobile app, we're also going to send you a push notification. Uh, so you know, as those direct bookings come in, it's there, it's waiting for you to take a look at and uh, an action. <sighs> Let's under it for now. Um, okay. so, yeah. <laughs> take a deep breath. Everything yeah. is fine. But you do have a long list of things to, to go through. It's, it's a long uh, one today. It's yeah, a long one. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, that's it for, for direct for now. Um, but we'll have a Q&A on the end. I'm sure there's a, a bunch of questions on that. I've seen some in the chat already. Um, changing conversations a little bit. Matthew touched on this really briefly. Um, on the last town hall, we shared that we are working on a remote lock integration uh, to enable hosts to connect other brands uh, besides Schlagen code locks that we support today. Um, it's going to add support for Yale, August Locks, Quickset, uh, Igloo Home, and other Schlage Locks beyond Sh uh, Schlagen Code. <laughs> Try saying that quickly. Um, we're still working on this. Um, we are focusing our efforts to begin with on August and Yale uh, as our first priority to deliver, and then other locks will follow after. It's kind of like a bunch of mini, -gration, mini integrations within Remote Lock. Uh, so we're going to focus on August and Yale first. Um, nothing for you to play with just yet. Um, but we will have more updates on the next town hall for that remote lock integration. Ooh, they just keep coming today. <laughs> uh, Toby, uh, another one of our project product engineers, is working on uh, iCal imports, uh, which we have talked about again briefly on, on uh, one of our past town halls. Um, so this is going to help you have a single view of your reservations wherever you decide to list them, uh, even if that's beyond Airbnb, Verbo, Booking.com, Direct, and Manual that we support at the moment. Um, we're planning to go one step further with this as well and provide and support messaging um, for reservations that come in through iCal. Um, 
similar to how it kind of works with manual bookings at the moment. So if you enter a manual booking into Hospitable, uh, you can obviously communicate with the guest through Hospitable. Uh, and we're looking to bring that to any reservations that come in via iCal. Uh, again, nothing to play with just yet, but just wanted to let you know it's something we're working on. And again, more updates in the next town hall, hopefully. Um, just to finish off and close up, uh, we've been fixing some bugs, uh, particularly smart locks. Uh, has had quite a lot of love in the last couple of weeks since the last town hall. Um, we've improved the copy on the sync settings page uh, to make it a little bit clearer what's going to happen. And uh, yeah, I think that's that's it on product this week. Um, I'll hand it back over to Pierre and Simona. Yep. Thank you, Ben. You can now take a glass of water. <laughs> <laughs> Deep breath, uh, glass of water. So uh, yeah, in terms of uh, product highlights, thank you so much, Ben. So we are starting a private pilot, pilot just to clear expectations. We have just three users on that private pilot, so we can really ensure that you know if there is something dramatic, we have a short uh, line, uh, a quick line of feedback. Uh, so far, basically, it seems like it's going fine, but we want to give them those users the ability to basically just send uh, a first wave of feedback before we can open it up to to more users. Um, this is something uh, we are dealing with money. We want to make, we have made all the smoke tests on our side, including the live testing, uh, but we want to make sure that the experience is going to be compelling. Uh, to ensure that basically you are going to be satisfied. I think a lot of users want to try it out and be among the first to try it out. Um, the reality is that you need to be ready to work with a product that is consciously and purposefully not finished. Uh, and that is basically we want to receive the feedback to adjust course accordingly. Um, so that is not necessarily something uh, that I would wish on, uh, on all of our other customers. It's not a privilege. Uh, it's not... Uh, we are looking for basically people that have a very specific profile uh, that can basically accommodate uh, a certain level of frustration and communicating the feedback as well. Um, so that's the, that's the case, for example, for private lot and for private for the private pilot for direct, and that is also the case in relation with Motlock. Um, that we I don't think we will have we'll have an update um, for sure next time. I do not believe uh, we will have a private pilot uh, so early uh, yet. Uh, for for supporting August and yeah I'm sorry I'm being a downer but I want to make sure uh, that you basically we don't set you up for disappointment um, so that's basically the way we want to release products uh, moving forward um, so private pilot for direct remote lock proceeding and I can import coming soon Okay, now we can be on the Q&A section. Uh, so thank you very much for being very active on the chat. Um, so there is a lot of things that you, you guys want to talk about. Uh, how about we take some of you uh, raising their hands if you get a chance so we can invite you on stage and we can start talking a little bit around uh, the questions that you want to, to have for us. Simona, I will let you manage this, but yeah, we invited. Yes. Thank you, Pierre. Um, we already have Tracy. Tracy on stage. Hi, Tracy. Yeah. Uh, you can unmute yourself um, and ask your question. And Simona, if I may say, we can probably, provided that people can mute themselves, we can probably have them on st several people on stage. Um, mm -hmm. So we're having. A, you know. Hello, Tracy. Tracy, how can, I, how can we help you today? Tracy. I think you're muted, so you're going to need to press the mic icon on the bottom right, I believe, so that we can hear you. Yes. Okay, you sorry about that. No problem. I have two questions. Only two? Yeah, that's a discount. <laughs> <laughs> um, Go ahead. Okay, I have, in all our properties, we have um, the Nest DL lock, and um, I was wondering um, how soon you would be getting around to... Um, trying to work with that one that's what we reported on remote lock so the um, the idea is basically we'll be uh, keeping in touch on this one uh, we just at the beginning of the development for remote lock uh, for the remote lock integration so that's currently the best path that we have uh, would be to uh, be a customer of remote lock uh, connect your lock on remote lock and then connect your remote lock account to hospitable uh, so that we can then create the pin codes whenever there is a new reservation. In terms of timeline, I would love to be able to give you one, and that is probably so. We we are aiming for basically 
mid and June uh, to proceed. Obviously, that's software development, so that has been delayed uh, due to discoveries in the process. Um, so I just tell you that it's going to be ready uh, as soon as it's possible for us. You know, that's just going to be the way we are. Um, okay, so I need to get to some device that that kind of like works between the Nest Deal lock and you guys. Sorry, say that again. Um, wh what you said, I had purchase. I have have to have an item that will work with um my lock and you guys. You said remote. I need to get remote lock. Yes, for okay. that's that's basically the way it works. We will not develop. Uh, so those are those companies have closed APIs. We cannot directly integrate with them. Um, they are proprietary and basically they typically work through a third party company to be an integrator, which is actually the reality of what's happening for the Schlage integration that we're having. Even though you can connect your Schlage device directly to Hospitable, it's still managed through a third party that was able to secure access to, to that platform, uh, to that integration. Okay, and so, is there a cost to that? Sorry? Is there a cost to that? Is there a cost to using a third party product to manage? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, and you don't know? Do you know what that is? That I, I would not represent the pricing of a, of another company. I think that's something oh. that you can check. Um, so you will need to go to Remote Lock to do that. There will not be an overcharge on our side, of course. Okay, so I go to Remote Lock and then check with them. Yeah. Um, and does the... that is, does that include Slage? If I do a Slage, do I need to go through Remote Lock? That depends on the Slage device that you're having. If it's a okay. on code, you can connect it directly to a spitable at this point in time, yes. Oh, and okay, no so I wouldn't have to go through to those. Without needing to use uh, another party product. Oh, okay, well, I'd probably just wait for that. And, um, um, I'm just trying to wait and I'm waiting for them to get more product in because there are uh, manufacturers that are stuck on the slage yeah. and code right now. Yeah, the, I think the situation is improving, but definitely it's not perfect. I've seen a lot of social media posts uh, from people that were saying, yeah, we finally got their hands on the on the Schlage on code device. Um, but uh, yeah, they, I was talking with uh, some, uh, what do I call that, uh, executive leaders um, and uh, the Schlage Allegiant team. And yeah, they basically still are, are working to basically adjust and adapt um, their <laughs> processors. As well, the thing that's happening is that the processor um, that they are using uh, for the Schlagman codes is basically getting deprecated and retired. It's no longer produced. Uh, so they need to basically re-engineer uh, the, the chips uh, to find something that's going to be more suitable uh, for the for the future. Okay, and you said you, there was other Schlage locks you could use besides the encode? No, there, you can only connect the Schlage encode devices on a spitable at this point in time. I okay. uh, would let you inquire with remote lock on the specific devices that the remote lock does support. I know for a fact that they support Schlage on code devices because they connect directly via Wi-Fi. Other Schlage devices, I believe, needs to go through a hub uh, to be connected to the internet. So okay, it's I a think, very I think complex question. It's a very complex <laughs> question. It seems like you're on the beginning of your journey to find basically how to connect them. There are multiple vendors that do that. Remote Lock is really the one that's coming very recommended uh, and that we've been wanting to build an integration with them for years at this point. So we are super happy uh, to have uh, an upcoming integration with them to support locks uh, or you know more complicated logic that would not be sitting well with our current existing integration. Okay, so um, are the, um, we don't like to work as many, we want to stay away from working with as many third party companies as possible. Um, right now we just work with you guys and Price Labs. Um, yes. You know we want to, you know we want to keep go direct with as much as possible. So I guess at this point we're gonna probably wait for the slage and code, so we can do direct. Um, but my question is, my next question is, um, what um, is that working pretty good with the slage and code? Um, are, are all the kinks worked out, or is there any issues with those? So what? So the, 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 this is a question that comes loaded. <laughs> <laughs> what you, you have you used that product yourself? This integration? Uh, no, you don't. Uh, you don't have the device. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I have Nest Deal. I have Nest Deal and other um, homes. So here is two things you need to look out for a successful Schlage integration with Hospitable. But that has nothing to do with Hospitable. It has to do with your device. This is a small lock that is going to be probably at the opposite end of your house, that from your router and your your, your point of internet connection. I don't typically have, you know, a router 
or internet point directly next to the access door. So we do see a lot of er a lot of locks that are erroring out because they are uh, they cannot respond within an appropriate time frame to a request that is sent to that lock. So be aware of that when you do your home setup to have the Schlage device at a level where you can uh, trust that they have a good Wi-Fi connection and a good internet connection that is going to be reliable. If you're going to be in the middle of the countryside uh, and having you know very shitty uh, internet connection, this is going to be a problem. If it's not reliable, we will have issues to create code, and you may experience you may exp have a different experience because the Schlage uh, application and platform is different for the software partners than it is for uh, for your own product. The second yeah. thing that is very often um, uh, or overlooked uh, is the batteries. So if you are hosting in New York and you have a property in Nashville, Tennessee, you're going to need to change the uh, wherever you are. The, you, those devices tend to drain batteries pretty fast. Um, so I think if you buy very high quality batteries, and it seems that there is a quality to batteries, uh, you are going to need to change them every three months. Um, I okay, that's not a problem. We have to we have to do that with Nestio. Um and then I get I get an alert on my phone. I don't know if, I don't know if Sledge does. I, this, but I know you do, but that's something that honestly we've seen has been causing a lot of problems, and that's that's really what we've been well, experiencing. Yeah, we're we're close to we're close to all our properties, um, like they're in the same town, so it's not far to go to change them, you know. And um, yeah. I have to do that with Nest. I'm used to that with Nest DL anyway. So um, I might only have to change them every six months, but um. I'll get an alert on my phone that the battery's running low, or I'll see it inside when I open up the app that the batteries are low. Yeah, so you know, you know, you have those factors. We just started having visibility into the battery, and that's something that in the future we'd love to be able to to alert you on top of basically what Schlage is providing, and in any case, give us some some forensic data on the on the Schlage integration. Oh, how long it lasts? Sorry. I mean, about how long the batteries last? No, no, that 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 is something that Schlage, uh, that that is more like Schlage. Uh, but for us, it's really telling you that hey, we're having a, uh, a yeah. code is being rejected, so, or we're not having a response, and that's, that's probably because your, your battery is low. Um, so um, as long as you have good internet connection, because all our internet connections are good, we have you know, so we have a lot of business travel, so we make sure we get high speed internet, and they're also on close to the locks. Um, so, you know, our router and, and modem is close to the locks. So, um, we should be good then if, 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 as long as we have those two things, um, going I think, right. Uh, th those are the two things that really we've identified, uh, that were really a problem on the, on the Schlage devices. Uh, okay. So I'm just telling you uh, like that you, you have some, uh, some answers on the, on the chat. So thank you, Christian. Uh, the Schlage Sense is a remote lock device, is re supported by remote lock, as long as you have a hub that is going to be compatible. That is not something that we're going to support immediately out of the box. Uh, priority for us is really on August, Yale, and Quickset devices, which is basically a category of devices um, that are basically going to be uh, going to be supported um, by uh, by remote lock under, under the same connector, to speak a bit of technical uh, terms. Oh, so you're saying that we need? I need to get we need to get remote lock. Yes, when we get remote lock, there's going to be August, Yale, uh, and uh, uh, August Yale and Quickset uh, locks okay. that are basically part of the same connector. Tr Tracy, oh. I, <laughs> there are a lot of people that want to be to okay. be on stage, uh, and there's, I think there is a, a busy conversation that can help you out with some tips around. Okay, I have another question, but can I um, answer setup. that after everybody else? Uh, if you just. <laughs> Tell me what it's about. Tracy. Oh, it's just like, I'm just a security deposit. I heard you mention something about the security deposit. Do yes. you use your system have a way to um, collect a security deposit from our guest? No, that's not what the feature is about. Uh, we uh, um, so Airbnb last uh, so on the last panel we announced the security deposit feature, which actually is just communicating to Airbnb that you will collect you auto, you will be able to collect a security deposit without infringing. Uh, Airbnb's terms of service. The security deposit collection uh, is something that has figured quite a debate, and I'm still basically going over the idea that I may have changed someone's mind on the internet. Um, but uh, security deposit is, there is a good reason uh, why Airbnb is no longer doing security deposits. It's basically, executing them really well is very difficult. 
um, and they do not probably, uh, they are not used uh, as a security deposit. They're used as a way to screen guests. Uh, they use as a way to charge or upsell uh, a guest for any kind of, uh, for another uh, additional services. Um, and to, we believe that for, for us, um, it, it's not necessarily the, the best path forward. So that's a reason, for example, for direct that we decided to go more towards the insurance uh, path, uh, which is a third party that is liable for damages commi occurred, uh, committed by the guest with an option always uh, to have a voluntary payment from the guest in terms of damages to keep the insurance premium low. Uh, and that's especially we partnered with SuperHog, uh, we're saying, telling us that 30% of uh, of the guests basically voluntarily uh, decide to uh, to pay uh, their damages uh, without having to touch the insurance because they don't want to be put on the blacklist. That is something that will be released in relation uh, with direct and in particular the direct premium product. Um, for security deposit, what you can do right now is on your property details page, uh, communicate uh, the amount of security deposit uh, that Airbnb uh, will communicate to the guest as part of the booking flow. Um, but you will need to secure uh, those direct deposit at the deposit, secure deposit at this point, security deposit at this point outside of Airbnb and under your own. So there are some ideas that were floated last week, last two weeks um, around, you know, using PayPal, for example. Um, I would definitely not recommend using Stripe um, because it actually will systematically flag your account. Um, uh, so considering that Stripe considers chargebacks and refund at the same level of, of risk, uh, they are not quite fit for, for that specific usage. So that basically is a little bit of a primer, um, but I'm sure that we can have the link to uh, the change log uh, that was circulated last week, last two weeks, uh, less than all uh, for the what's those security deposit change and tails. I can share that with you, for you. Okay. Thank All you, right. thank you, Tracy, for your two questions. <laughs> uh, Thanks, hello. Tracy. Yeah, hi, Matt. Uh, you can unmute yourself. You're on stage. Hey there. I think Matthew answered my question, and and the previous conversation with Tracy, I think, helped as well with the remote lock integration. You know, we have a boutique hotel concept that will be integrated with Airbnb um, and VRBO and Expedia. And I guess my question was, and I, and I think I understood this, you're planning on launching with remote lock at the end of June, or I may have missed that target date. And then I guess my follow-up question to that was, is all of the locks that are associated with remote lock with their compatibility going to be integrated with hospitable, or is it for now just the August, the Yale, Slodge, and then I think he said um, the quickie set because set. it doesn't sound like the commercial locks, like we have an open edge lock for commercial building. And I'm just making sure that that is going to be part of the integration. So it, it is going to be part of an integration at one point in time. Um, it's just that we're listening to our customers very attentively. And what they, we have a solution for the Schlegel Code device, which we believe really is the master lock uh, for the short term rental industry. Um, and the, the gap that we have is really around August locks, year locks. Quick set, not so important if I'm honest in terms of, in terms of market share, uh, but it's basically something that's coming within the same scope of integration. Basically, remote lock has five different connectors to different types of locks. And for us, that's basically five different integration to have to support those categories of locks or brands of locks. Um, so we prioritize. Uh, the first category, August, Yale, and Quickset, because those are basically, if I understand correctly, the ones that are going to be part of the first connector, and we're prioritizing August and Yale uh, to cover most, uh, more in any case, uh, property owners uh, and host. Um, later, we will basically integrate with more devices from remote lock. It doesn't mean that we're going to stop, but we will continue supporting more uh, devices on remote lock, but those are basically a different milestones in terms of development. Um, so we prioritize August and Yale, and we basically be extending our support for remote lock devices uh, progressively over time. We have two developers uh, that are working specifically on uh, this remote lock integration with their own project manager uh, to ensure that everything is completed uh, correctly. Um, in terms of Timelines. I know this is a question that you want to have. Why, why would you? What? What is the the context of that question for you, Matt? 
Well, our our concept will be our target opening is October. So I just want to make sure because with the we're kind of dependent on hospitable from a VRBO Expedia standpoint to get the messaging and the locks out because remote lock is not partnered with VRBO and Expedia. Um, so we're kind of hoping you guys will be kind of the third party middle management to help get from the instant messaging and creating the message and the code by being connected to remote lock to get that to VRBO and Expedia customers. And, and what is the, the brand of lock that you're using again? That's going to be. Uh, this lock, and I'm going to follow up with our um, our project leader on this, but it, it says Open Edge 600 Commercial Series. But that may be like a specific lock that it, it could be part of Yale or Quickie Set. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty familiar with those locks, and I've not so seen this one. I do have the Open Edge 500 Series lever that is supported by a remote lock, but I'm not sure about, uh, about the one that you're using, the 600 Series. Yeah, this one says 600 series light commercial. So the I would want you to check with remote lock whether they support this device at all. <laughs> I'm not seeing that in the documentation that they provided us. Uh, okay. Back from January. Um, yeah, this is just what he sent me yesterday from remote lock. So I'm not sure. And I have the vice president from remote lock that sent me something two days ago. <laughs> yeah, so I, I'll ask him. So you're saying you don't have the 600 series as part of the... As part of this data package, no, I don't. But, but okay. that is a bit of a low fable side. It kind of tells you why. Right, <laughs> this I get project it. Project delayed. <laughs> is if 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 that's something that if it, that requires you know a retrospective uh, to to understand the locks that are supported, that's a bit on the embarrassing side. Um, for us, basically, our understanding is that we have that support. Um, so I, I don't know. Maybe the documentation is obsolete. Uh, maybe okay. it's not open to third-party uh, integrations, which is a bit of idiotic because obviously remote lock is uh, fundamentally depending on, on those third-party integrations. Okay. My so, last yeah. piece um, <laughs> real quick um, on this is I do have other single properties, um, and we do have the Yale August key, you know, the keypad um, on one of the listings. And I do know that, you know, that's, instantly integrated with um, Airbnb through the August app where they're automatically sending out and, and basically making the codes automatically to our guests when they book. Is that something with their application? Cause I know it says like connect with, and then you can choose, you know, Airbnb or, you know, other types of um, third parties where you, where you're will hospitable show up there to connect that, or do you know anything about that type of integration with their application? I'm sorry, I'm not sure. Which application was, uh, was who exactly? Uh, this was uh, August Yale. Um, I had their smart lock on one of our listings, and it has okay. a keypad on the front door. But Airbnb automatically generates the code. You connect through their app to Airbnb. I, I would, so if they connect to remote lock, they, they would be in charge of the authentication. Uh, so you would have a link. To, is, is that answering the question? I just didn't know if you were going to be generating, if it was possible to connect through their app to hospitable versus Airbnb to generate the code or if it's better oh, just wish. to. Oh, I wish. Um, so no, the, if using remote lock, you are going to connect your August account to remote lock. And then on the second stage, you're going to connect your remote lock account to hospitable. Okay, so that's what I thought. Okay. We'll be doing from hospitable is connecting with your remote lock account. We don't directly or through a third party connect with, I think we connect with remote lock and remote lock connects. Uh, Got with, it. Uh, August. Makes so sense. I appreciate your guys. No. I appreciate your answers. That's no. all I have. <laughs> okay. I want to and, uh, you're all good. I'm not going to take up any more time. So you're all good. <laughs> okay, fine. Thank, Thank you. you. I have more yes. for you by October. I will have a, a better solution for you. Hopefully. All good. Thank you so much. Thank you, Matt. Yes. Hey, look. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> go, yeah, ahead. go ahead. Simon, I'm not interrupting you. Ah. <laughs> Hi, Carla. <laughs> you can unmute yourself now and ask your question. Hello, Carla. I don't think we can. Oh, okay. Hi. Hey, hello. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I'm trying to figure out this app. <laughs> yeah, um, okay. I have a question about the iCal. Um, we're, we have our own website that's getting, um, rebuilt and we wanted to integrate the calendar on there so that people that are booking direct 
um, can see the availability. And we're just getting a link to an iCal on the website versus being able to physically like see it. Is there something that we need to do differently or is that not a possibility? I'm I'm not sh sure. Why where would you want an uh, why do you want an iCal to show the availability for third party websites and not use for example um, are you familiar with uh, the widgets? The booking widgets that we have? Yes. Oh, well, we uh, we tried using the widget and I uh, yeah, um on for our our actual website, but it was just showing up as a link instead of the actual widget um for the calendar to show. Ben, can I ask you to <laughs> chime in on this? I don't know if you. Yeah, yeah. sorry, I was just trying to find my mute button as well. Um, who? Uh, sorry, Carla, if, if I miss this, who is building your website? Like, is it based on Wix or something like that? Um, GoDaddy. GoDaddy. Okay. Um. Oh yeah, we haven't had any. Uh, we I know there's a, an issue with Wix at the moment, which we're looking into. Um, but I'm not aware of anything with GoDaddy. If you wouldn't mind, uh, actually, I think I can I can reach out to you directly um, using the uh, the widget on Ask Visible and gather some more details from you on that one, and we'll see if we can work it out. Um, okay. Yeah, we should be able to get that widget up and running for you. Okay, yeah. perfect. Thank you. Normally, you you are expected to be able to embed the code directly uh, into your your other uh, your third party website. And uh, the, the widget should basically be loading a view of your calendar with the ability to add a number of guests. Uh, okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Carla. <laughs> I have a great rest of your day. And we can move to Simona. Hi, Brianna. You're on stage. Uh, you can. Okay, um, I just have a question in terms if you guys have a solution or a suggestion for sending an automated message out for reminders. Um, what I'm trying to do basically is in, involving trash day. So like for our trash, it's Wednesday and Saturdays. So I, I'm trying to figure out if there's a way we can send an automated message that sends every Tuesday night, every Friday night, hey, tomorrow morning is trash day, but it goes to the whatever guest is checked in at the property on those dates. So I haven't quite figured out a way to do this, and I'm not sure if this is something we can currently do or maybe something that could be offered in the future. It's, you know, an automated message that would be set for every Tuesday night, every Friday night, for example, and then it would only send out to guests that are checked in at the property at the time that that would send out, if that makes okay. sense. I'm gonna play a bit with the team here. Um, Matthew, do you feel like it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, have you taken a look at the scheduled day of the week messages within guest experience, Brianna? No. So I was hoping that there okay. was going to be an answer I didn't know existed. <laughs> yeah. So if you go over, log in, right, and then you head over to guest experience and you go to your messaging rules, you'll be able to okay. click on the top right where it says add new, and there will give you the option to schedule a message based on day of the week. And it should do exactly what you're looking for it to do. Uh, you'll be able oh to tell gosh, us which yeah. day, and then there's also an option to, hey, if the guest is checking in, I believe, or the guest is checking out on that day, so you'll have some customization within there to do exactly that and send your trash day message, letting them know that, hey, tomorrow's trash day. Could you help us by taking it out to the curb? Uh, awesome. and it's It should be pretty straightforward for you. You can check out our help center as well if you have any questions around that specific schedule day of the week message, uh, or okay. just reach out to the support team, and they'd be super happy to, to help walk you through through if need be. Okay, yep, the support team's always really helpful. Awesome. I'm I always listen in on the town halls and I'm driving and I keep forgetting to to send a, a support ticket in on this. So I'm really glad that this exists because this will be really helpful because I have a one and a half year old and I just keep forgetting to personally remind people to take the trash out. So the scheduled day of the week sounds perfect. Let's never have you do that again. Let's go ahead and automate that <laughs> for you. Again, go to guest experience messaging rules, add new in the top right and you'll see it based on the scheduled day of the week. Cool. Awesome. Well, I'm so glad that this exists. <laughs> thank you, guys. We're so glad you exist, Brianna. All the best to you and the, the little one. Yes, thank you. Thanks, Brianna. Uh, hi, Lauren. The stage is yours now. Hello. Hey, hello, Lauren. How are hi, you doing? Hi, yes, we can hear you fine. Okay, great. Um, thanks for um, letting me in to, um, to ask a question. 
I'm not sure if um, there's a little background noise, so if you can't hear me, let me know, and I'll try to reduce it. I'm cooking, actually. <laughs> um, but in any case, um, I don't know if other hosts have this issue, but in my jurisdiction, we recently have had um, the short-term rental license laws go into effect, and so um, several of my listings are now um, – unlisted on Airbnb and so on hospitable I also can't see my calendar but I still have a lot of reservations from now through the end of the year which Airbnb is keeping but I can't see any of them when I'm in the hospitable app are you guys aware of this and like is there a fix I think so yes absolutely um, I think the by default we only show you on the calendar the listed listings I'm going to answer, obviously, the, the um, actual question first. Um, so we show only the actual properties that are listed. If you want uh, to show more, including your unlisted properties, uh, whenever you are, I think I'm then going to intervene here, but I th I'm not sure that's going to be on mobile. But you can also use the filters, and you need to include unlisted and check include all unlisted. And that will then show you the calendar for in including for your unlisted uh, properties and you can do that on mobile as well and you uh, can do that on mobile so there is always a bit of a floating thing around the mobile for filters because i know they were super hard to find a way to implement them find the space so yes Lauren, you can see the calendar with your unlisted properties and will i have to go in and do that like every time i go into the calendar or will it like hold that setting i think that's where i'm going to then <laughs> that's maybe a hot potato but I think I think we. Sorry, I was I was I was tapped out. I was in the hospital lab. <laughs> um, you will have to do that every time at the moment. Yeah. yeah, I think we we I think we have been working on basically some persistence of the filters around. Is that is that true around the inbox? We have yeah, for that. and that's more for like when you go into a conversation and you come out, um, yeah. come back into the inbox. So there there will be some persistence there, but if you're talking about kind of closing the app or coming back and remembering that preference um yeah. that's definitely something we don't support just yet okay yeah so, that's, then, uh, so what, what's the plan on getting those listings back online because i think that's the more important thing yeah i mean i'm gonna probably shift to booking.com and try to get my direct booking website more traffic by um just making the website better and marketing to past guests but i I contact. I was off of Booking.com because they take a larger share than Airbnb, and so um, I just kind of got back in touch with them, and I found out that they are not um, deactivating. They're not requiring um, rental licenses for my properties. Yeah. And so um, I'm gonna keep operating until the government basically personally okay. like finds me or shuts me down. Um, I will I would, try I would, to get. Lauren, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, sorry to interrupt. I, I would strongly encourage you to test out Booking.com before you start making big decisions. Depending on Booking.com, um, I think there has been there is a consensus towards the opposite direction over over Booking.com um, being a you know a fantastic partner to to be working with. So I, I would strongly encourage that you basically check things out there. Um, where where are you where are you based? Um, in DC. In DC, okay. I, uh, I think I need, we need to check a bit what's happening there in DC. I've not uh, heard myself particularly something. I think we've heard a lot about Atlanta recently. That is going to a uh, bit of a compliance problem as well. Uh, what's the problem in terms of licensing requirements? I'm just curious because it has touched on basically the responsibility for hospitable in terms of direct. Basically, you aren't going to be able to host anymore unless you are. Um, Okay, I'm not an expert at it. I know I don't count, so I kind of I know that. But one of them is if you are um, if you're not going to be present in the property, then you can only do it for like 90 days of the calendar year, and like no stay can be under like it, it, there's a there's a requirement for the number of nights for for a stay, but you can only do it for 90 days of the calendar year. And then if you live in the property, so if it's say your basement has a separate apartment that you're renting out then you can do that for up to 180 calendar days of the year. But in either case, the owner, it has to be your um, primary residence. Primary residence. And you have to be eligible for the homestead tax credit. 
So if you have another property that you're receiving the homestead okay. tax credit on, then um, it's it's not going to be eligible. That's my understanding of the law. So like in my case, I do rental arbitrage. So, you know, even if I were to convince my landlords to, um, to apply for the license on my behalf and like to allow me to continue to lease, which they, they like yeah. me leasing it. Um, they, I don't know if they own property in the state that they're now living in and if they, you know, how that would work. And then the other thing is that you have to, have a very rigorous tax submission schedule and I'm just not at a point where I would want to possibly like I'm not efficient enough yeah. where they could get like fines or warnings I don't want to involve them in that yeah um don't think you should say that in the regard <laughs> Lauren <laughs> really quickly <laughs> hey Matthew here um have you considered moving to you know stays longer than 30 because you know hearing what a lot of people in the industry kind of say is when I know some of the experts when they were faced with those regulations, especially with the new market that's there with people looking for those longer term stays, you know, focusing those properties on those longer than 30 so that you are compliant. You're not dealing with any of those headaches and you're still using those platforms for those mid stays. Is that something that you've considered for your business or is that just a non-starter yeah. at this point? Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, I've tried to go in as soon as Airbnb unlisted my properties i tried to go in and say the minimum stay is 30 days but for some reason they still they didn't automatically enlist it and i couldn't toggle the button to to relist it and i called airbnb and they said give it a few days or something and i haven't checked back today so it just happened on june um 7th and then i tried it a couple days later it wouldn't work um i couldn't get them to show back up but I do have gaps in my calendar that are less than 30 days. So that's where like booking.com or maybe Expedia, I don't know, could come in in terms of me, you know, filling up my calendar until I'm at a point where I might have 30 day, 30 day blocks available for other people to book, which wouldn't be until maybe like August or September. Okay. Thanks for sharing. Thanks. Yeah. Lauren, good luck for uh, sorting <laughs> this out. <laughs> this, is, yeah. th this is reminding me of exactly what's been happening in London a few a few years ago uh, with uh, the same type of uh, similar restrictions uh, that have happened. So if you want to research or, or just, uh, navigate to it. Um, um, okay. I do have one question for you. Well, to, actually, yeah. I had a second question for you, Pierre, but also you said you strongly advised against booking.com. I just wanted to know, this is not my official second question, but like, can you tell me more? Like, is there, like, what aspect of it are people not liking or you don't want to I, say? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much, Laurent, for this question. <laughs> <laughs> That's the output it. Uh, typically, what we hear is that uh, if you started hosting on Airbnb, Verbo was probably a challenge. Booking.com is like your PhD in uh, user interfaces. Um, so it's a completely different product that was not built for short-term rentals. And that has basically find a way through it. Um, but it's definitely a, a different type of product. You need to be committed to it in terms of making it work. Um, in the U.S., you have it relatively easier because they do some payment collection uh, for you. But, for example, on others, uh, they would basically not collect uh, payments for the, for the, from the guests directly. That obviously results in a high number of cancellation, no-shows, uh, and you cannot charge anything at this point. Um, so that, that just basically one line. Of oh, okay. Um, okay. They also have, they are very friendly towards hotels, uh, managing a large uh, number of, of properties, and they really have been engineered this way. Um, but for example, there are things that you don't expect uh, in an hotel that you don't, you expect to have a check-in at the hotel to verify your ID card. That's not the case. Booking.com doesn't do it for you, unlike Airbnb. Uh, would do it. So that's basically something that, you know, mature operators that want to explore working on Booking.com uh, have already a solution that's going to be working for processing the payments, uh, for screening the guests, um, and for basically uh, enforcing a bunch of things. So for us, that's really uh, where AutoHost uh, has been coming into play very often. Uh, and okay. obviously using Stripe uh, with payment links to collect um to collect the funds or to capture the funds from the guests directly. So okay. it is it is not out of the box like it is on Airbnb. Yeah, and I've, been, I've used Booking.com before. It wasn't it wasn't so bad for me. Um, so I mean, I, I definitely can understand like some of those sentiments, but it wasn't it wasn't that bad. Um, 
but earlier in the call, my second question was earlier when you first spoke, you um, had said that you, I wasn't sure if you were feel, fielding um, feedback from hosts because you were, you were asking, oh, what was the question you asked us about um, the, not, it was not security deposits. What was the um, new integration? The taxes. Oh, do we want taxes. Um, the, yeah. I mean, my feedback, I mean, I would want an option. I wouldn't want the platform to like require it. I would want an option to like say, yes, I want that remitted for me or no, I want to do it myself. Sure. That's <laughs> we are never <laughs> going to force you to do anything uh, in, in that regard. It's uh, there is no value. It's, it's not perceived that we're going to be added value. That's basically a, a conversation that we should have with someone else. Um, but yeah, thank you, Lauren, for, for that little bit of, of feedback on uh, tax and compliance. Okay, thank you. Thank you all for your um, you, tips as Good well. Luck. I appreciate it. Thank you. Bye-bye. And Simona. Thanks. Thanks, Lauren. Um, and Scott, you're on stage, um, and I think you have the honor to ask the last questions of the night. Ooh, excellent. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate the town hall. I, I wish I got to join more of them. Um, my question's around uh, task uh, automation and task management. Um, is there going to, or plans to have the ability for, let's say, cleaning tasks to be marked as complete uh, by a cleaner or a handyman or some maintenance tasks to be marked as complete? Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a box. <laughs> I think the term is hot potato that we've been using. Today. There's, <laughs> another, there's another hot potato we're going to throw uh, at it. That's funny because Zach is not here. Zach was here, which is spicy. Um, <laughs> no, it's so okay that's that's where th thank you for asking that question at the yeah. very end everyone is like going to doing the work over time now uh that's thanks to you Scott. you're welcome <laughs> <laughs> no so the thing is this is great and obviously that's a very popular request um i think there there are a lot of things um that that are moving into the same direction uh basically uh, the, the point of it is not basically to get you to to get your cleaner to market task as complete because then what, once it's there, do you want them to upload pictures? You want them to be in touch with the reviews or cleanness? It's basically, it's a feature request nest. The, the, this little thing, this little button is going to force us to commit on a product line that is really going to be interacting with guests, uh, sorry, with cleaners and host property managers and basically uh, reinforcing operations product. Now, that's obviously coming from your experience of operation, the operations product being, let's say, uh, mediocre to um, dreadful from my own perspective. Um, and that's because it was thought, you know, as a, a, like the rest of hospitable in the beginning, like a notification product, but that's not really what the problem is. The thing is w what we believe is really the best way to work with property owners and real estate investors and including even property management companies is basically you you want to have obviously that full product uh, that so you are a property owner you want to recruit obviously a cleaner for your for your property you want to source them you have your own stuff that's fantastic you want them to be able to configure what's the best way to reach out to that person to configure our workflows to configure their workflows um, it's it's not necessarily the job of the property owner to decide really what is the what are the emails or what are the tasks that you need to configure that also doesn't work really well because if you have someone that is lucky to be really specializing for short-term rentals in particular, they're going to have other clients. Uh, they're going to need to find one way to basically make it work across that entire kind of, that entire kind of timeline. So that's why for us, uh, we're not going to touch anything operations related uh, for the meantime and for the, let's okay. say the, the next, uh, the next three to six months, because okay. we want to take the time to think about what is the best way to work it out. And I had the privilege of actually taking brunch uh, with um, Asaf Karnon, the CEO of Turnover BNB. He came all, over, all the way to, to Brussels. I still cannot wrap my head around that uh, to basically discuss um, what, what, they were, what they are doing and uh, how, we could, how we could work together. Um, what, what our idea is, is that it takes a village to create, um, to, to manage uh, efficiently, profitably uh, a short-term rental business. And whether that you are you are in need of property manager, whether you are a property manager yourself, or you're really committed to basically managing on your own, you cannot really do that on your own. You're going to need to find a cleaner. You may want to look for a virtual assistant, someone to manage the guest communication. You're going to want to find an accountant. And you know what? I think Lauren may need a lawyer. I may need someone to assist her in basically mm -hmm. ensuring uh, that there is someone to uh, to get her to a licensing requirement. Those are things that are happening 
uh, and uh, for example, Airbnb reopen uh, their co-hosting service in some key cities. Um, so uh, they are basically facilitating this co-hosting thing. And that's really an, uh, one additional evidence that there is a need for service providers in this market and you need to have them qualified, you need to have them onboarded quickly to have access to the data and you want them to be having the room to manage and demonstrate value to their clients. That may be you and uh, that may be your property management company because they even have, they have 10x the problems of, of staffing uh, their teams and ensuring they are recruiting the, the best talent for, for managing their properties. I'm talking, for example, you know, a revenue manager uh, to ensure the, the pricing asset correctly. That can be a marketing person to help you uh, recruit your, your marketing people. So it's not what we could easily go. Yeah, market task has done. And then we basically commit on the long product and we're going to have to build on this legacy on product that probably is no longer fitting the job for the reality of our customers today. What we want to have and that's something we're going to explore after direct uh, is basically building more of a marketplace of service providers where for cleaning people, for virtual assistant, guest communication, for revenue managers, all this, those kind of professionals that are, that are helping host of property management companies that otherwise are relatively hard to access and vet uh, and onboarding them to your account on Hospitable in a very easy way so that they can start delivering value so much faster where we are developing also products that facilitate their lives a lot, a lot, a lot more, uh, that facilitate their lives to ensure that they can basically ship something of value quickly to you. So, you know, I'm, I'm host if I would not basically look at having a virtual, uh, having a virtual assistant myself to manage the communication on guests. But if there is a way to basically make it work because that virtual assistant is going to have an inbox with something like, you know, 10, 15, 20 clients altogether that actually we start to make to make sense and they can be a price per message or a price per hour, but we are tracking you know, precisely the time that they spent on a, on, a particular, on a particular communication. We can work with cleaning companies to ensure that they are in the loop of their, of their reservations and we basically facilitate the payment all the way. You are, there are a lot of, of customers that uh, join on this town hall and you know, commenting on, on the remote log that basically they don't want to deal with another third party service provider. That's actually what we talked about uh, with turnover BNB is really how deep can the integration be uh, for, for basically facilitating um, you know, creation of jobs uh, whenever there is a new reservation and basically ensuring that there's gonna be a cleaner to clean that reservation. So yeah, you know? yeah, we do that actually now. We have a, yeah. an automated task, go to our cleaner, our cleaning manager. The, the biggest thing for me, <laughs> all I was looking for is that, that task complete so that I don't call my cleaning manager if I have someone who wants to check in early. That's that's my biggest, and, and you know, I've looked at third-party integrations. I I much, much, probably like all of you, like you said, I'm trying to keep the number of third-party tools to a minimum. Um, I've looked at Breezeway and a few others, uh, Turnover BNB and a, and a few um, to, to get more in-depth, but some of those are actually, frankly, far more complicated than we than our needs. Um, so, that's because yeah, they expose it to you. That's it. that's because they expose yeah. it to you. And the reality of it is that I don't. You should. You are the proper. You are the property owner. Your client. The only thing that you have to mm -hmm. do is basically share access, and mm -hmm. they are the one configuring what they need to be to be yep. doing. Yeah. And what what do you need to have the task complete? Oh, for me, I just need to know it's done. The cl the cleaner is. It's, there's lots. There's. I mean, there's checklists, and I don't know if the management company, that cleaning company, would want photos and all that stuff so they can have evidence. Yeah. That, but for, for me as the property manager, I just need to know that one, a task has started and two, it's been done so that I don't have to call the cleaning company to say someone wants to check in at three versus four. Yeah. So that yeah. basically is more about the, the exchange yeah. of information. Yep. And it's also about payments, you know, just very simply. It's basically, oh, it's been done. There's yeah. a service that's going to be delivered yep. at one point. It's going to be payment collected. So I, I think the ideal is that. I don't want, I want you to know the job is done. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. I, I don't want you to, to have to deal with basically creating a task in the first place. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly. <laughs> and, my, and, and like I said, we've thing. been very good at it. it, it the, the cleaner creates the task, the cleaning manager. It, it, it stuff's odd. She gets the schedule whenever there's a modification to a reservation or a new reservation. She goes and creates all the tasks and does the scheduling. I, but she's hospitable to do the scheduling and tasks. I don't, I don't deal with that at all. She just has access to the system. So, okay, thank you. Yeah. 
Very welcome, Scott. That's the kind of thing that we're doing. Uh, we kind of take a problem and go a bit to the core, and that's how we are doing things a little bit differently. If you like us, that's because we're doing the thing a little bit differently. And that doesn't mean that we're going to be faster at realizing those features, but it does mean that we're hopefully a shot at fixing the real problem and do something and delivering far more value than alternatives and to you in particular as property owners, hosts, uh, real estate investors, and property managers. Um, thank you, thank you very much, Scott, for your last question. Um, I'm sorry, I see the number of messages. There are some amazing questions out there, um, but I think if you if if you want to ask more, um, I would obviously drop my email, uh, pc at hospitable.com. Uh, so I think there are a few questions around our remote lock. Uh, there are a few questions about you know uh, about direct uh, direct premium. So I, I would love to be able to answer your questions by email. Unfortunately, what I've checked is that the moment we stop the room, uh, we can no longer uh, basically access those past uh, messages. Um, I would love to be able to answer a little bit outside of the of the tunnel. Okay, um, thank you, thank you everyone. Brilliant tunnel, very happy with it. Um, thank you, Matthew. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Simona. Um, and uh, we'll be. So I don't know if I will be there, but when is the next one? <laughs> Simona. In two weeks. <laughs> in two weeks, yeah, in two weeks. So that's going to be the thirty. Yeah, somewhere around. Yeah, 29th of June. Uh, maybe there. I don't know. Thank you very much. And happy rest of the day to you. Thanks. I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye.